sensory experiences are like elephants who upon encountering a desireless man see him as a lion they immediately turn on their heels or if unable to escape stay on to flatter and serve him sensory experiences are like elephants who upon encountering a desireless man see him as a lion they immediately turn on their he heels or if unable to escape stay on to flatter and serve him now we realize that this is metaphorical yes <laughs> so what happens is that when there is attachment when there is desire then these experiences of this phenomenal world they might seem to have some power over us what is the power if i am attached to something then if that goes away and ultimately all that comes must go so if i am attached to something and if it goes away then there is suffering or if i am averse to something and it shows up as it often happens that which we are averse to often shows up we are averse to something it shows up then that causes suffering so sensory experiences are like elephants who upon encountering a desireless man see him as a lion which means that if you are not holding an idea about what should be you are not putting up any defenses if you are not sticking on to some experience with glue then you will not feel the pain or you will not experience the suffering pain can come also as an experience but the good news is that you don't have to work on desire separately you don't have to work on becoming desireless that is the beauty of this inquiry that is the beauty of this path that as you come to the recognition of who you are then all of this duality desire doership all gets taken care of you see so do you don't have to take this on as a side project who are you as that gets more and more clear then you will find that in reality you have always been the desireless one you don't have to work on becoming desireless they immediately turn on their heels or if unable to escape stay on to flatter and serve him guruji often says that if you chase the world it runs from you but if you just sit with no desire for the world then the world comes to kiss you this play this movement is to serve consciousness in your being you will find that all that is needed in service to this being emerges on its own but this phenomenal appearance is not in service to your false ideas about yourself so if you approach it in that way then it may, might seem like everything that you pick up eventually seems to bite you why because the false has to be dropped you see but if the false idea of who you are is dropped away then you will recognize that whatever the event might be whatever might be coming up is for your play is in service to you 
So that's why the sage said they immediately turn on their heels, or if unable to escape, stay on to flatter and serve him. A man with no doubts, who knows only self, has no need of practice or liberation. A man with no doubts, who knows only self, has no need of practice or liberation. Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, he lives as he is, happily. Very beautiful verse because these are the two aspects of satsang. A man who has no doubts, who knows only self. So this knows only self, that is what the inquiry is for. That is what the recognition is for. All these pointings, can you stop being? Are you aware now? What is aware of being? What knows you exist? All these pointings are just ways, aids to inquiry for you to look and to come to the recognition about who you are. Then you will find that all is the self. Only the self is reality. So this self-recognition knows only self. Then, the one who has no doubts. So what do I always say? If you come to this recognition, but very quickly the but might come. So this but is the doubt. I am the self. I see only there is a self. But, and this but, this doubt, is always from the wrong identity. All doubts are personal. I am awareness, but how do I stay there? Is this a doubt from awareness? So immediately it contradicts your own insight. So these are what we call conditions. No doubt can arise unless you have a condition about yourself. So as you come to satsang, you're finding that the recognition is happening, only the self is, and the dropping of the false conditions, the beliefs in the wrong identity is happening. It's so simple, isn't it? But the entire journey of, seeming journey of satsang is captured in this one line. A man with no doubts, who knows only self, has no need of practice or liberation. What does this mean? That there is nothing to do to get there. I've been saying, don't take a step. What are you before you take the step towards your thought, towards your perception, towards your relationships, towards anything that is happening? What are you already? No practice is needed or liberation because what you find is that there is nothing that can truly be bound. All your doubts are about this bondage. All your conditions are about this bondage. But it is even more ludicrous to say that you can be bound than someone coming and telling you that I have bottled up all the space in this room and I'm, I want to sell it to you for $10. Did you buy this deal? What you recognize about yourself cannot be bound, isn't it? What you are recognizing now about yourself is forever unbound.
then whose problem like i was saying the other day whose problem are you trying to solve something that you don't recognize about yourself about one mythical entity you trying to give freedom to the loch ness monster <laughs> you at least would have heard of this if you remain with the recognition of yourself not believing that which is false then show me how you can pose as someone who is bound looking for freedom is it but the point of this pointing is to bring you to neutrality to emptiness it is not to get you the idea that i am free the idea i am free is not so important is at least here now that we are on chapter 18 verse 47 because why because this i which means the proclamation of freedom is itself the limited one neither bound nor free if you are forever unbound can you be free if there is no bondage it doesn't apply to you bondage of freedom is like if i ask you what color are the diamonds on your crown where that example came from <laughs> what is the color of the diamonds on your crown or are they real or are they fake and if you are convinced that they are fake and you want to get real ones then you will spend your entire life in misery because there is no such thing that's why the seed said a man with no doubts who knows only self has no need of practice or liberation seeing hearing touching smelling eating he lives as he is happy why is he, why did he put the last line in because most often what we hear in satsang and even the other day someone new came to satsang and he said i'm willing to drop this but the fear comes how will my life go on is it going to disintegrate into bits that's why the sage said seeing hearing touching smelling eating he lives as he is happily the outward expression can continue to move all the rules that seem to be required can continue to be played that which is designed this entire play can play the role of partner of parent any any situation is all by the design of consciousness anyway life needs no support from that which does not exist life itself is the play of that which is
one whose mind is emptied by the mere hearing of truths sees nothing to do nothing to avoid nothing to warrant his indifference the good one whose mind is emptied and unconflicted by the mere hearing of truths sees nothing to do nothing to avoid nothing to warrant his indifference so it's so beautiful that we are attracted to this pointing to the truths we find that by the mere hearing of it the recognition of the self emerges you don't have to do any spiritual heavy heavy lifting just by the mere hearing of this you recognize what you are and we are blessed in that way one whose mind is empty and unconflicted by the mere hearing of truth sees nothing to do nothing to avoid nothing to warrant his indifference so neither desire nor aversion we have looked at this many times the sage does whatever appears to be done <laughs> without thinking of good or bad his actions are those of a child this is a classic sage does whatever appears to be done actually for all of us this is just a movement within consciousness all this seeming doing so when it says sage does means that consciousness itself is doing all of this although outwardly it might appear that the sage is saying this the sage is doing this all of this is just moving the sage does what appears to be done without thinking of good or bad his actions are those of a child a child leads a very natural life all that is needed for the child's life is there taken care of he is not strategizing the five year plan saying i am one and a half years old now by the time i am six and a half i want to achieve these goals and these targets <laughs> no child is saying that the identity is not yet fully developed the sense of false egoic control over life is not yet developed his actions are those of a child depending on nothing one finds happiness depending on nothing one attains the supreme depending on nothing one passes through tranquility to one self depending on nothing one finds happiness depending on nothing one attains the supreme depending on nothing one passes through tranquility to one self this is clear to us that as we are empty of any dependence as our mind is unconflicted as the sage said that we are not using the crutches of any appearance we find that there is so much space to come to the simple recognition of who you are
to find that naturally happiness is present. But what is usually found is that very few upon hearing this depend on nothing, are able to just depend on nothing. You see, if it is that simple, then you just told everyone, go down to the streets and tell everyone just to be happy, just depend on nothing. So you're not able to relate to this formlessness, you see, because we are so used to depending on something. We've always felt that our happiness will come in some form, through some form. That's why the master is a great gift. That's why the master is a great gift because we are not usually ready to depend on nothing. Then we get, if you are blessed, we get the company of one who is actually depending on nothing. And for a while, it can seem like that is something. You following me? For a while, it can seem like the master is something which himself or herself depends on nothing or no thing. So this is the great lifeboat. Because we are not yet ready to depend on nothing. Then, but the longing is for the truth. Then in the form itself, something arises, which we call the master. Who is pointing you to your formlessness. Now this is the master, the thorn you're using for first aid. All the other thorns are embedded, all the conditions are embedded. This is the thorn that you're using for first aid to remove these thorns, painful thorns. So that is why this thorn is thrown away at the end. It is not thrown away like the rest as The rest are discarded. With great happiness, the discarding happens. But the master is discarded by merging with the master. Merge into that nothing itself. Or as I prefer to say, the nothing itself. So be careful when the mind comes and tells you, that I have now, I have gone beyond the master. See, that I can, is usually very smelly. Don't be in a rush for that. This discarding is the most beautiful merging. It's the most beautiful oneness. To see the... That's so why I'm saying that as long as that is not clear, then grace has also sent us the form of the master, which can, might seem like it is something, but is only pointing you to your nothing. So depend on that. If depending on nothing is not apparent, not clear yet, this life boat has been sent to us in our lives and it is completely dependable then you will find that the Master is my own Holy Presence, my own Divine Presence, your own. And what is this Presence representing? What is it the Presence of? It is the Presence of the Self itself. The self is no thing. So if the self is no thing and the master is pointing 
has got you to the recognition that you are the self. Therefore, you are no thing. Then what things can you depend on now? If you yourself are no thing, if no thing really touches you, if no thing actually brings anything to you, nor can hurt you or affect you. Then what thing can you depend on now? If you have gone beyond all things, if you have gone beyond time and space, in the recognition of what you always were, then what thing can you desire or run away from? In India, in the small villages and towns, there's usually the small medicine seller. What do they have? Do you have, they have these stalls? They have no certificate of any sort, okay? They just have these small stalls. Some of you have been here, you've seen them. And they'll have these small bottles with some pills or some liquid syrup, something. And you go to them and you say, I have a headache. They'll say, Take this bottle, 10 rupees. You say, I have a stomach ache. Take this bottle. Same bottle. Take this bottle, 10 rupees. <laughs> you say, I have um, cardiac malfunction. Take this bottle, 10 rupees. <laughs> I have a brain tumor. Take this bottle, 10 rupees. Everything is like that. So in the same way, we have one bottle, which is find out who you are. Recognize who you are. All your ills, all your conditions, all that you believe about yourself gets resolved in this discovery. That's why I said earlier, don't work on becoming desireless. Don't work on depending on nothing. See that you are no thing. So this is the same bottle we have, but we have it in multicolors, you know, different colors. Are you aware now? Who are you? <laughs> Can you stop being? Different, different colors because you get bored. If I just came here every day and said, are you aware now? Who is aware of this awareness? Okay, okay I feel I'm done with this satsang. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> so, <laughs> different, different color bottles is to keep you entertained as you come to the same recognition. How do you come to this depending on nothing? In the same way. Discover what you are. Recognize what you are. Find what you are representing. Does that, does that have validity? Does that have reality? Why do I prefer to use the word no thing? I was seeing on Facebook the other day and I don't know if it's true. Many things are on Facebook, which is, as Trump would say, fake news. <laughs> So I don't know if it's true, but I heard that uh, there have been instances of some of the recent Advaita teachers committing suicide. I don't know if any of you have heard this, I saw on my Facebook. Maybe my Facebook is more yes. ghastly than <laughs> all of yours. <laughs> so I saw this because uh, somebody reported that they got into some sort of a nihilism you know, some of you know this term nihilism, which is uh, 
that oh what's the point of it all it's all nothing anyway yeah. it's all nothing okay. like that so the discovery that you are making about yourself although is empty of qualities and attributes is not nothing it is no thing this is very important distinction sometimes jokingly i say you don't come to the discovery of yourself and you see oh this is the same as an empty coconut or something <laughs> that would mean that there is nothing there is nothing inside this coconut it's empty you see the discovery of the self is not that you come to this discovery of the self which is so pristine beyond limits beyond time and space beyond attributes and qualities and yet it is prior to beingness it is you are so please don't rush to picking up ideas of nothingness come to the recognition of this no thingness then all these terms of emptiness otherwise sometimes when you hear the term empty open they can seem like scary things to you it is not the loneliness of emptiness not that kind of empty it is the source of all things present prior to presence aware before your being so this pristine nothingness in which all things mm. seem to appear and disappear all presence all love peace joy and the opposites all are part of its play the self all intelligence it is not an inert object all intelligence emerges from this all of this beautiful wonderful play of consciousness emerges from the source the absolute the truth which is what you are the self if you hold on to your personal identity and you more and more objectively look at the functioning of this world then it will be a depressive meaninglessness like <laughs> depressive yeah so once again let me make that point which is that if you look at yourself as a person and more and more you are realizing recognizing the meaninglessness from a personal standpoint of this world then it can seem like a depressive meaninglessness once you see that you are the source and you are the light and you are the screen then it is a joyful meaninglessness there is a beautiful meaninglessness you're not trying to look for meanings in events because you completely find yourself to be meaningful you need no other meaning to define you what are we looking for we are looking for self definition isn't it what is it people are searching for who they are what is my purpose in life is it and then you might come to see that ah these questions have been looked at for thousands of years but nobody has come to a conclusive meaningless to a conclusive meaning 
except to say something which sound good and take the question away. But as you discover yourself to be this consciousness and the source of even this consciousness, then the meaning is found in yourself automatically. There is no further need for self-definition. 